Okay. Well, here we are. Good morning, good morning. We made it again. Thank God. It is Tuesday, February 6th, and we are blessed to be here once again. I can't tell you what a blessing. L listen, every day when I say this to you, I mean it. Because when you look at the sunshine, even the rain, e even the uh, the snowstorm that we went through, if you want to call that storm, it, uh, yeah, it was pretty bad because it kept a lot of us in, uh, myself, for a week. And so even looking at the beauty of that and the stillness thereof, I was, I was good. But um, every day, even when it's raining, a lot of people, oh God, who wants to get out and drive in that rain? I understand that, but we're able to because he woke us up and he allowed us to be. And in the sunshine, of course, the sunshine, even if there's a cool breeze and it kisses your face. I mean, life can be a little rough, but it's a beautiful blessing to wake up to life, to have second chances, to um, be able to see loved ones and talk with them. So every day I will say it's so good to be here with you. I will say that always. Um, we will always say, and I hope that this, <laughs> I hope by me saying, this is the day that the Lord has made, let us rejoice and be glad in it. I hope that kind of stick with you. You know what I mean? Like when you wake up, just say, oh Lord, thank you. This is the day that you made for me. Take it personal, because it is. You know, this is the day he made for me to allow me to do so many things that I didn't have a chance to do yesterday. And, and like I said again, whether that be asking for forgiveness or forgiving someone, um, whether that be, uh, you know, I really wanted to hold that baby yesterday. But listen, new days, new grace, new mercy, new everything. It's a beautiful gift. So again, when you wake up, thank God for your being. If you don't want to say this is the day the Lord has made, which it's going to become a little habit because, ooh, even if you don't go through the whole thing, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Or wake up saying, oh, Lord, you gave me a new day. I will rejoice. Or, hey, you gave me a new day. Thank you. So I can try to get it right. Whatever your little prayer is, pray it. Because we, we uh, look, if you're like me, you have to talk to him throughout the day and the night. And sometimes you may fall asleep on him. Uh, my friend and I, or a friend of mine and I, we used to, um, not used to, we still say it, but not so much anymore because of what I said to her. And it's like, have you ever prayed or you were trying to talk to the Lord and then you fell asleep? And I said, yeah, I used to apologize to him all the time and said, oh my God, I'm sorry I fell asleep. Or did I finish my prayer? Did I finish my conversation with my father? And then I finally just thought this, that he knows, <laughs> he knows that we're tired. He knows what our day was like. He hears our prayer in our heart and he sees it. He could see it. And um, so he knows what we go through. He listens to us and then he puts us to sleep. That's, that's just my thinking. I don't know that for certain, but that's the feeling that I get is that while I'm talking to him, he will rub my back, he will stroke my hair, he will touch my face, but he brings me to a calm to where I can go to sleep. So I, it's not a matter of feeling guilty anymore. It's just like, Lord, he already, he knows. So with that being said, uh, this is also Black History Month. And since we're black when we were born and we will be black till the day we die, black history we're living it on a daily. We are black history. So that's every day. But they gave us a month. How special. Um, but let us celebrate each other. Let us celebrate our history. Let's learn more. There are things that I'm finding out that I really didn't know. Again, they don't really teach it in the school. Um, where I grew up, there was a, a separate, and that's because um, someone started the program. Well, actually, it was my mother. But there's a program and it was um, uh, black English, it was uh, black history, it was, you know, so that we would grow up knowing something because really we don't know. And, and we're an amazing people. We're beautiful, we're special people. So we should, 
we should uh, know that we come from royalty. We are royalty. We are children of God, the Most High. So therefore, they, I mean, oh God, we're such a blessed and beautiful people. But mm, I didn't mean. I hope I didn't say that with any kind of attitude. But <laughs> but um, really, we need to celebrate ourselves and celebrate each other and be loving and respectful of each other and 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 try to discover your history you know i mean it, it we get excited for this month and we do celebrations and then somewhere around mid-march or the first week of march then it kind of slips to the background but i want us to be well we are proud people but knowing some of the things even like because i love poetry and and then i have to go beyond uh, Maya Angelou, I have to, you know, Amanda Gorman, she's a young, I think she's about 23 now, and there are so many, so when I was searching for things, I was just amazed, the dancers, the the, uh, the poets, the singers, you know, so um, it's not just that, it's um, the first doctor, you know, the first, um, the, we're, we're the first in a lot of things you know, and scientists and all kinds of things. So um, we should be proud, even more proud. Not only what we've endured since the beginning of time, really. Um, but I say all that to say, let's think more of ourselves, and, and I'm talking to me, to educate ourselves, because I find it fascinating when I was uh, searching for a prayer, and I thought, wow, this is beautiful. So let us love on ourselves, love on each other. And, and you know, really, I'm, I'm speaking on it like this because of Black History Month, but I mean, we need to do this to everyone to um, be respectful of, use the fruits of your spirit for everyone. Because we're all black, white, green, purple, red, yellow. We're all God's children. So uh, looking at it that way, then use the fruits of your spirit with everyone. But I'm talking about uh, self-respect. Uh, I mean, our culture, the black people. So um, let me share a couple of um, prayers that I, 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 I like them. And I found some poetry and things, so if we have the time. And then I would also like to give you some firsts. I have to, um, it's actually on my phone. It was sent to me, so... Uh, maybe in the second half an hour, I could uh, share that with you. So let me share this, and it's a, a couple of prayers. One is, and this one doesn't have a name, but if there's a name afterwards, you know I'm going to share it with you because um, I like to give the credit where it's due. I like to say who wrote something and um, give them that because, man, I tell you, words are important and it's your tone it's it's how you express yourself so uh, let me share this grant us the silence of heart so that we can grow in your word as we go through this worship today and cultivate what we call black history month help us to never forget our history and instill in us the willingness to share our history with our youth and others throughout the year. Okay, so throughout the year, I, um, man, so that, you know, our kids will, maybe they'll start looking at themselves differently. Maybe they'll have a different respect for um, their own culture, their people, their history. The, you know, there's so many, but so many talents, so many talents, and they need to say, oh my God, they did that too, they did that too. It's, look, we all need to be educated. I'm waving my hands for those who can't see me. This is a prayer also for black history. May we be generous, okay? May we be generous in our love of others as we work towards ending misunderstanding racism and injustice creating communities of human flourishing through jesus christ your son our lord who is alive and reigns in and reigns with you in the unity of the holy spirit one god now and forever amen 
I like that one. I like them all. Anything to do with uh, prayer, poetry, song, anything of of art. And, and, oh, my God, you know, I said this yesterday. We're such a beautiful people. We, we really are. To look at, oh, there's something I read I'm going to share with you, and it, it describes us. I mean, because we come in all shades. I told you that. Shapes and sizes and height, and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Sons are a heritage from the Lord. Children a reward from him. Like arrows in the hands of a warrior are sons born in one's youth. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. They will not be put to shame when they contend with their enemies in the gate. Come on, let's keep sharing. Let's keep sharing. I, I do want to get back to you. Uh, yesterday, I was talking about the women in the color purple and the misters and the masses. Oh, yeah. Got to get back to that. But you have to allow me to share this one. Ooh. Now, this one, I believe, has a name to it. I know that it... Uh, okay, there's a photo here. That I hope and pray... <laughs> that I uh, get this name right. It's Kiera, last name, S-T-U-V-L-A-N-D. I'm not going to try. Somewhere in there, one of those is silent, I'm sure, or not. I don't know, but her first name is Pretty, and I hope I'm pronouncing that right. K-I-E-R-R-A, Kiera, and last name Stuveland. We're going to go with that. The presence of the Lord is here. We feel it in the atmosphere. This holy hour, we bring ourselves into your presence, O oh God. To you we offer our prayers, our praise, and our supplications. This month we celebrate black history. Yeah, I'm sorry. This month we celebrate Black History Month and honor the culture of our brothers and sisters. We remember the legacy of those who came before us, who not only paved the way, but carried the bricks on broken backs that then built that road. We remember the songs, stories, and fiery hope of old men and little girls, granny midwives, and marvelous musicians, and leaders, entrepreneurs, and innovators, those who are earth tone brown, black as the night, Fair like the sands of Egypt, we are kings and queens. We are descendants of royalty. You know I'm going to go back and repeat some of this. Lord, when it's too hard, when it's too hard living, we remember you are the great I am and a source of strength and purpose for each new day. Help us in our advocacy efforts with bread for the world to honor you with our work for justice healing and peace in our day. Help us as we labor for the end of hunger. Help us to stay educated and active as we read the unaccept unacceptable statistics that point to the fact that one in four African American households is food insecure as compared to one in 10 of white households and that more than one in three African-American children live in food insecure households compared to one in seven white children. God help us to value diversity beyond variety. Help us value diversity with a vision for a progressive future that acknowledges our strength together as well as the power, creativity, ideas, and heart that we will all bring when we are all welcome to come to the table and test and taste and see that the Lord is good. Help us labor on until we can all sing for good and right reasons. Oh, happy day. Amen. I, that, I'm going to not pick it apart, but I had some, I love the whole thing, 
but of course something stuck out to me. And again, that was I, I I'm just I don't mean to botch up her name, but it's Kiera Stuvelin, S T U V L A N D is a major she's a major gifts coordinator and development officer at Bread for the World. But but I what I besides everything I like the way she describes us, who are earth tone browns, some are black as night, Fem some of us are fa fair skinned like the sands of Egypt, so you see that, and, and then she goes on to say that we are kings and queens and descendants of royalty, Be and th that makes us royalty, you feel me? So. Um, and, and then she says, who not only paved the way, okay, we remember the legacy of those who came before us, who not only paved the way, but carried the bricks on broken backs that then built the road. Oh, Lord, I like that. We remember the songs, stories, and fiery hope of old men and little girl, granny midwives, and marvelous musicians. This is such, I, I really, I could sit here and look up things and read them all day. Because the beauty of, uh, to listen to music and, and know where it's coming from, uh, different types of music. Um, again, I love words, so I love poetry and um, different, different prayers. Let me see what this one brings. As I'm searching for something, I do want to um, share with you or talk to you about, because uh, I know I ended it early. You know, we talk right right up until two minutes to nine or nine o'clock. <laughs> oh, you know what? I think I could read this on the air. <laughs> I really love homage to my hips. Okay, ladies, listen to this. And this is by Lucille Clifton. I really, when I saw this, I kept this up since yesterday. I read it last night. I really, and it's a short one. It's a short one. Homage to My Hips by Lucille Clifton. These hips are big hips. They need space to move around in. They don't fit into little petty places. These hips are free hips. They don't like to be held back. These hips have never been enslaved. They go where they want to go. They do what they want to do. These hips are mighty hips. These hips are magic hips. I have known them to put a spell on a man and spin him like a top. <laughs> I like that. I like that. I love poetry, and I love the, the expression of she's, describing and talking about the beauty of her hips. Come on. Come on, ladies. We know who we are. There's so much, and, and I just, I do, I'm going to share so much with you this morning, but let me, let me touch back on, because I, I felt like I, we were getting into a groove together about uh, the women in the color purple, which there are plenty that when you're watching that movie, could probably relate to the character. Either you're one of them, or you know someone who is. But each one, to me, were special in their own right, and they found friendship in each other. A friendship that, you know, most people sometimes... Uh, they look at someone and they're already judging because of their lifestyle, what they have or what they don't have, or how did they get that, you know. Instead of lifting each other up, we're all different. We all have different backgrounds. We grew up different. Um, but that doesn't make your way the right way. It's right for you. Maybe you can add a little something to me. Maybe I can add a little something to you. You know, um, like I said, Celie, she had to learn. Th this is how I gathered it. Watch it for yourself. And I know you've seen the same thing. You can't help but see it. Celie never knew love or, or tenderness or 
someone listening to her or uh, letting her know that she's special and value, valuable. She didn't learn any of that except through another woman. Now, that doesn't mean that um, there was a lesbian relationship going on. That, that It doesn't mean that. You could be kind. Some people have never experienced that true, uh, what is the word I'm looking for, uh, unconditional love. It's like, I love you for who you are. You know, you're, you're special. Who told you that you were ugly? Or who told you that you'll never amount to anything? Who, who told you that, you know, you're beneath my feet? Who, who did that? But there are people who play those mind games, and they are manipulative in their so-called I love you. You know, some people just, they don't even say they love you. They don't even play the game. They just go ahead and, and just start treating you like, I caught myself. Now, fill in the blanks for me. Come on, you guys are on the other side, so you can speak out loud and say what you know I can't say. But, um, you know, so, so when... Miss Seeley learned her value or learned that she can be loved, that she actually has those feelings inside of her that she can give love, tenderness, and all of these things. She didn't learn it until Shug came along. And however that, that you know, watch both versions because it's, it's, uh, it's still the same message to me. Throughout the whole movie, it's still the same message, but um, it's just done a little differently. And because even uh, Miss City didn't want to see her go, because it, it just it was the, the atmosphere in the room was different. Even though she was messing with the husband, she didn't care about that man because he didn't care nothing about her. So she didn't know any difference. She, he was just something, you know. Oh dear God. Um, so she had to learn that, and it was through another woman. And that's okay. You know, like I said, it, the movie doesn't s say that they developed a relationship and that, you know, now she's like this. No, that's not it. You have to watch the movie. You have to be open to things because you're going to miss the message by trying to analyze and come to a conclusion that is it's just wrong. I'm sorry. You know, I don't look at that as a bad thing. I'm so glad that she learned and received something tender and special and knew what love was. Or just know what, you respect me, you talk to me, you find me pretty. Even though I've been told I was ugly all my life. I've been beat down physically, verbally, you know. And then there's Miss Sophia. <laughs> You, come on now. As soon as she gets on the screen, you just love her. Uh, that that woman was a very, her character was very strong, and she knew what she wanted, and she wasn't afraid of man or woman, black or white. And as strong as she was, and, and she can give you a royal beatdown, you can tell that she loves deeply. And that she, uh, I know I'm describing, uh, as I'm talking about uh, these women, I know I'm hitting on somebody. You know, somebody, it's either you or you know somebody, whether it be in a family or a friend. But Miss Sophia, she, she was no joke. I mean, and, and, and you know, she really did love her husband. She really did love and she had his best interests at heart. And, and Miss Celia had, I mean, not Miss Celia, uh, Miss Sophia never, um, to, as, as she was portrayed in the movie and then in the movie musical, that she's never been uh, disrespected or beat on by her man. So it was unacceptable. We got to talk about that leading up into today's time. It was unacceptable to her, and she wasn't going to have it. But as strong and mighty of a woman as she was, she was fun, she was loving, she was loyal, she uh, provided, I mean, she was just that, that woman, and, and, and her 
It didn't matter to her size. She was beautiful and could move. See, that's what I'm saying. It doesn't matter to the, the if, if you're that cocoa brown, if you're a, a black, 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 or light skin, like, like it described in the uh, prayer poem that, you know, s that your skin is like the color of the sands of Egypt or being as black as the night. Or, you know, I forgot how to describe the brown, but it, our shades, that's what makes us so different and so unique. And so, Miss Sophia, I really loved everything about her, but they broke her. They broke her, but I'm going to tell you, I believe that in her heart, when she was in that prison, in that jail cell, and she, her spirit was broken, but she would sing and pray. And then Miss Seely's love and compassion for her, and she would see her. So I mean, you see the different type of women. No, nobody really judged the other. You know, um, their lifestyle. I mean, they really wanted Miss Seely to like get a backbone, and who didn't? And I'm gonna tell you when she was going to uh, shave her husband. <laughs> I know a lot of us thought, "Here's your chance, honey." slice them but when the Lord is in things when he has when he has a plan for you he can stop some he will stop some things from happening everything happens for a reason now we don't know the outcome we really don't uh, if he if she would have sliced his throat we, we don't know you could uh, uh, imagine, well, she would have got life in prison or uh, she's a black woman. They would have executed her. I, I don't know, you know, but I'm just trusting God. So uh, even though we would understand why she did it, even in that, God has a plan. So I just trust him with my life, you know, and that's it. I just trust him with my life. We all got a lot going on. I do. I Ugh, got a lot. Um, but it doesn't, what, what I was talking about the different women, and then there was Squeaky. We're going to get to her. <laughs> We're going to get to her. She didn't have a big role in it, but it showed that when uh, 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 Hoppo and Sophia uh, separated there for a while, then Squeaky came along. Now, can you imagine, can, could you get along with the current girlfriend and you got children by this man? Because come on now. You know what I'm talking about. There are some women who can still get along with the new woman in their baby daddy's life, and they can get along. And you know, that's why I said we have to d listen. This isn't a put down to men, but women, we need to really um, support each other. And and um, oh, you know what? I didn't realize. You see how I got I do it I'm doing it again. I'm enjoying the conversation. We need to take a quick commercial break. I want to thank you for joining me here on this fine Tuesday and you're listening to WKAX fifteen hundred AM, the winning worship radio show, and we'll be right back.
Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. We're back. I'm back. Look, it's it's that technical stuff that trying to get it together because just, look, technology. It wasn't that bad. I was on the floor trying to get my microphones to get uh, the headset and the microphone. Again, you know this is live, so therefore... Anything can happen, and it's okay. I just go with the flow, and I appreciate you going with the flow with me. Listen, listen. before we uh, end this, I know my time is short, so I, I do want to, let me invite you out to church, because you know what, in the, not only for Black History Month, because I just thought about it, uh, I'm sure he's gonna teach on a lot of that, and, and I do, I love our history. I. You know, you learn more and more, and we should, and I'm talking to myself. I'm talking to myself. Matter of fact, we could talk to people that we know who are, you know, ha- who have lived it. And um, so I'm going to quickly, and I'll, I'll share the other half, because this gentleman has uh, done a lot in his life, and he's so humble. Um, but listen, let me invite you to uh, Galilee Missionary Baptist Church. If you don't have a church home, you are so welcome to come out and join us. Our Sunday morning service is at 9 o'clock, and feel free to come in about 8.30. Again, we offer uh, coffee and juices and pastries, you know, like cinnamon buns and uh, what is that, honey buns or what? <laughs> we do. We offer you something. So if you don't have time for breakfast and you're out rushing, uh, don't rush. Just come on in and allow us to serve you, and then you can go into the sex- sanctuary and just uh, kind of uh, sit there and and meditate and pray a little bit and relax and until uh, service starts at nine, and then you will receive the word of God from the man of God, which is Pastor Mashur to G Knox. And I enjoy the services. I do because you that you're there to hear the word and um, receive it, and how do you apply it to your life? That's Bible study to me. I, I really love Bible study. Not to say I don't love Sunday. I do, but that's where you sit and you receive it. And I usually take notes anyway because you're going to want to remember the Scripture so when you go home, you know, you could study it for yourself. That's where Bible study comes in. That's Wednesday night. And the reason why I say 6 o'clock is because 6 o'clock is usually when we have our dinner. And then 6.30 is Bible study. And Bible study is really, it doesn't feel classroomy. You don't have the spotlight on you. Um, everyone said, if you come for your first time, you you won't feel it. You won't feel like it's the first time. Everybody's going to make sure that you're eating and that we, we conversate, we laugh, we get ready to learn together. So um, whether you've been there 25 years or you've just started your babe in Christ, or you've been in there for five years, it doesn't matter. Nobody's expecting you to know everything. That's why they call it Bible study, so that we could study the Word of God together and that uh, our pastor, Mr. T. Knox, breaks it down in a way that you understand it. And if you don't, we, we discuss it. I usually sit there kind of quiet. I, I, I love listening to my... Um, my church family, the questions that they ask, the interaction with the pastor. Even though we laugh and we talk, we learn a lot, and he breaks it down for all of our understandings. We're all on different levels of levels of understanding and learning, but I promise you we're on one accord in that room on that Wednesday. So I would urge you, if you have a church home, attend your church and your Bible study. And then, if you do not, please feel free to come out to see us at Galilee Missionary Baptist Church. It's 23001 County Road 14 in Florence. You're welcome anytime on a Sunday, on a Wednesday, uh, for Bible study. I really do suggest Bible study because you can learn there, then you will understand what he's preaching about. And even if you don't, that's why we keep coming back. I mean, don't say, oh, I've... I've done the church for about four or five years. I'm good now. I know enough to get me into heaven. Okay, now. All right, now. Not really. 
it, because we have to, if you live to be 80, and, oh, here, here's a good little analogy, just, um, and this isn't a, a put down because there are people who only uh, have had, I'm talking about back in the day, maybe even now, I don't know. But when I say it like this, understand what I'm saying. God, that's going to be kind of a deep one. But anyway, if just say that you've only had an up to an eighth grade education versus a twelfth grade or or the first two years of college, it's enough to get you going. And then you you do gain experiences over the years. So you know that's not a put down to nobody. Understand me. But what I'm saying, as far as your the spirituality, as far as that, as far as knowing God, I'm in amazement every day of my life. So I'll never stop learning. We'll never know the mysteries of. We'll never really understand fully a whole lot of things. That's why we have to get a relationship with him. And I don't care if really, if you have a if you're 32 years old and, and you only have a sixth grade education, when it comes to the word of God, when it comes to his children, it doesn't matter if you are a, have degrees up the yin-yang. It doesn't matter if you only have a fifth grade education. It doesn't matter if you're a professor at a university. It doesn't matter if you're the CEO or the janitor. When it comes to God, we are all his children. It doesn't matter to what level and what your background. I don't care if they say you're the biggest hoe in town or if you have you are a priest. I don't care who you are. God is our father. We are brothers and sisters in Christ, and we need to hear the word of God. We need to apply it to our lives. So did I give you enough of that? Was that a good enough in invitation for you? I hope so, because I mean it all with love, okay? I really do. I hope to see you out there. So if you come, just uh, like I said, you know who I am. I, I don't see your face. But if you say, hey, I was listening to you on the radio, and you invited us out to church or to Bible study, honey, I'm a hugger. If you say that to me, I, I'll just grab you and pull you in. If you're not a hugger, extend the hand because I'm snatched it anyway. <laughs> That's what I do. Um, listen, uh, advertising, quickly, businesses and separately churches. We have a package that will fit your budget, I promise you. You would not only be uh, here on the AM, WKAX, 1500 AM, but you would also uh, would be advertised on our sister station, WMXV, 105.1 .1 FM, the music muscle of the shoals. Um, I got to tell you about the lunchtime crew and the 5 o'clock hour, the drive at 5 with Montreal. They're a good group of people. They will keep you laughing, but also they're informative. They give you good information of what's going on locally here in the Shoals area. Um, they're a good crew, I promise you. The lunchtime hour is uh, the uh, old school preacher, the church secretary, and the choir president. Five o'clock, the drive at five, the Ain't It Main Show with Montreal and guests. He really, you will be entertained on both of those as well as educated on some things. But as far as advertisement, I, I promise you on both stations, and then we have a TikTok and we have Instagram, Facebook. So listen, it is affordable because we're gonna work with your budget. So businesses, small and large, give us a call at 256-712, I almost lost my mind. 712-2887. Churches, we're in this together, okay? We need to know your location, your times of service, who pastors at church, your upcoming events. So give us a call, the same number, 256-712-2887. And uh, just your location, you know, everything. We're in this together. So churches, we have a separate package from the business package that will fit your budget. Just give us a call, okay? Let's work together on this, all right? We're all under the same umbrella. We're all trying to give the same message in one souls. Okay, let me give you a couple of things. I, I know everyone knows um, Joe Duster here in Florence, Alabama. Um, he was the first black fireman 
and you know uh, come to find out there's a lot of firsts with him um, and I pray I, I talked with him and I got the names of some of the people he uh, his daughter for example um, so God please let me get the names right but uh, Joe Duster was the first uh, Alabama's first black fireman engineer fire truck driver lieutenant and the first black lieutenant fire inspector investigator in northwest Alabama Carolyn Miner was the first black secretary for the city of Florence fire department Carlos Woods was the city of Florence fire department's first black captain and battalion chief in fire suppression Anthony Cole was the city of Florence first black lieutenant in fire suppression. Jeffrey Perkins was the city of Florence fire department's first black fire marshal captain, deputy chief, and fire chief. I hope I'm pronouncing names right. Oscar Southard. Oh God, please forgive me, Oscar. S O U T H A R D Southard. Forgive me, Oscar. And Harrison were the first two black policemen in the city of Florence. Janice Johnson was made, I'm sorry, Janice Johnson was the first black female police officer for the city of Florence, Alabama. Cornell Randall. Florence, you got it going on with all these firsts. Cornell Randall was the city of Florence, Alabama's first black male nurse. Ricardo Randall was the first black man from the city of Florence to serve as the director of the veteran administration for the state of Alabama. He was sworn by the governor of this state. He was sworn in by the governor of this state. Chandelise Duster that is, Joe Duster's daughter, was the first black journalist and reporter from Florence, Alabama, to work for NBC News in Washington, D.C., and the first black female at CNN News, a journalist and reporter. That's Joe's daughter. You can imagine how proud, how proud. Ethelene Duster was the first black female in the state of Alabama to serve as the deputy director in the emergency management agency. Go ahead, Duster family. And Chandelise was the first black female from Florence to hold these positions, all those positions. So, um, oh, let me see what, I'm telling you, he has, in the nature, Natchez Chase, oh, was the first black man to work for the U.S. Department of interior building the na nature's chase. Okay, you know, my mouth is starting to twist. And the first black man to serve and join the Muscle Shoals. JC's. Now here's another one. This one right here. This, this one tickled me. And I'm reading it as he sent it to me. And born on February 1st, the first day of Black History Month before it existed and was delivered by Dr. L. J. Hicks, who was the first black physician to be elected in any county medical society in the state of Alabama. So on February 1st, he was born on the first day of Black History Month by the first black doctor, the first uh, physician elected to the any county medical society in the state of Alabama. Now that was black history moments that took over uh, most of Florence, Alabama. That's a lot of firsts. God bless them all. I hope I got your names right. Chandelise uh, Duster, Ethelene Duster, Joe Duster, Ricardo Randall, Cornell Randall. I'm giving you all applauses. Janice Johnson, Oscar Southard, God forgive me, Jeffrey Perkins, Anthony Cole, Carolyn Miner, Carolyn. Hey, Carolyn. I know her. Okay. And again, Joe Duster, so I applaud you all. Okay. 
as the first of everything here in Florence, Alabama. And I know them. I don't know Joe's daughter or Ethelene, but I'm telling you, it's it's so good. And these people are still walking the earth amongst us. That's why I say that not only just the the older folks get some of their history, you know, and learn and listen to the stories, man. Listen to the stories, and then you still have someone who's still alive and tell you, "Hey, I was the first black fireman." And then this, and then to, to for them to still be alive and watch how things have the changes, some things that will never change, you know, and they have history, and I love that. So just find somebody, some of you young, the, the young kids, you know, or even us who have a history, sit them down and tell them, you know, so they'll have a sense of direction of where they should go or be proud of who they are. And, you know, it's not just grandma. Grandma was a midwife. Grandma, grandma was serving in the you know, one of the wars. I, you just don't know. Grandma bit that. <laughs> Listen, Grandma built that house that you're living in. I'm just saying. Come on now. We are such a beautiful people with such history. So, happy Black History to all of you. And we we are winding down. And I I probably will share this with you again. I'm not just gonna do it today. It's just February six. I'm gonna shout this out again. Because uh, we and I applaud you all who are listening. I applaud you all, and we can't forget. Pastor Mashur T. Knox is the first black and owned FM urban radio show here in the Shoals area. The first, okay. Um, Tori Bailey, is it? Okay, I got the name. I had to think about it for a second the first AM radio station. Okay, there's so many, and these people are still walking <laughs> the earth. I mean, it's like, you know, what tickles me is that um, I guess during these times here in 2024, 2020, 2023, whatever, that we don't look at it like that until we hear it, until we stop and say, hey, he's the first at this whole thing, you know? So to live somebody, to be a part of someone's dream is amazing. I never thought ever, ever did I ever think that I would work at a radio station. And then on top of that, him being the first black uh, uh, owned FM radio station here in the Shoals area, the first black owned FM. I'm applauding. And to be a part of the dream is just, it's amazing. It's his vision, you know. And, uh, you know, the first black position because who would have thought you know someone paved the way for him to get where he is so we're, we're just gonna just just pick up a book today or google something and and just man i tell you i love us i love us and for those who aren't the first at anything just be a proud people because not only of our black history but first and foremost we are royalty because our heavenly father we come from royalty, okay? God first, seek first his, his kingdom and his righteousness, and everything else, I'm paraphrasing, will fall into place for you, okay? This is a beautiful day because it's not only the day that he made for us, but that we are a part of it. We're, we're living history. We're the first in something. It may not be famous, it may not even make the history books, but we were the first in something in our lives. But just to share and just to be a part of something is a beautiful thing. I do want to uh, take this few minutes to wish you a beautiful day. The sun is shining last I've seen. <laughs> I do believe it's going to shine all day. And whether there's sunshine or rain, we're a blessed people. We're a blessed people. And we serve a mighty God, a forgiving God, a merciful God, okay? Share the fruits of your spirit. Be kind to yourself. Be forgiving of yourself. It is um, always God first, family, and then everything else. Believe me. Um, whatever you do today, be mindful of how you treat people and yourself. 
kids love on your parents, parents love on your kids. I mean, we're all we got. And so when we lay down at night, if you don't have much to say to your father, I would suggest that you, that, that this is easy, people. Thank you for getting me through the day. Thank you for the food that we have received on this day. Thank you that my family is doing, we're doing somewhat well. All is well. Everyone has eaten. Everyone's going to bed. I haven't received a phone call. You know, just be thankful for the day he's giving you. But at this very moment, just be kind. Just smile at people. It's, you know, life is, is rough enough. And we're at our jobs for 8, 10, or 12 hours a day. We have to make the best of it because we work together. So let's let's just just be mindful. But everybody, somebody got something going on and you don't know what it is. Is You're all in your feelings and that's okay because I get it. You're going through a little something. They may be going through something. We don't know that. But let's just kind of be cool and respectful. And if somebody says, hey, I'm having a bad day or I'm in deep thought, it's not you. So if I snap, please forgive me. Listen to him. Let's make this a good day, okay? He gave it to us as a gift. So tune in tomorrow and every day, Monday through Friday, from 8 to 9, okay, here at WKAX, uh, 1500 AM. It's the Winning Worship Radio Show. We are the faith frequency on your dial. And I look forward to every day that he blesses me with and to share it with you, okay? So you take care. You have a beautiful and blessed day. Know that God loves you, and so do I. So peace. Have a great day.